87 years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, our country's future was again at risk. The Civil War began in 1861 with the succession of the Confederate States of America. But by 1863, the blockades of the Anaconda Plan and Union advances were strangling the South of resources. Early in the war, the Union Army captures Tennessee, or Memphis, and then this foundry doesn't produce any more. In a bold move, General Lee chose to invade Pennsylvania in the north, hoping to move into a position where he could threaten Washington, D.C. itself. Now he threatens Washington, and he could have changed the whole course of the war in history, okay? That's what the plan is. The Union Army, led by General Meade, moved north to engage Lee's Confederates. The two great armies, 150,000 men, would converge on the farming town of Gettysburg. Today we're in the town of Gettysburg, where the most famous battle of the Civil War occurred. Remember we talked about Robert E. Lee's been fighting in the state of Virginia all this time. He's in Pennsylvania now and he doesn't really know the territory. Scouting forces of the Union Army under General Buford would first encounter the Confederates to the northeast of the town on McPherson's Ridge. General Buford, who led the first engagement with the Confederates. This is McPherson's Ridge, where the battle began. This is the cannon that fired the first shot at Gettysburg. The Confederates are shooting their artillery here at the Union troops. As the Confederate Army assemble and scale their attack, the Union soldiers are forced to withdraw to Seminary Hill and eventually Cemetery Ridge. Part of the reason they get to Cemetery Hill is, who is the man on day one who was on the horse who died? Reynolds. Reynolds. Reynolds, right. He wants that high ground because it's the best position. So the Union Army gets to Cemetery Hill because Reynolds already knew ahead of time that's where he wanted. Here we are at Seminary Ridge where the Confederate artillery took position. Despite pounding from the Confederate artillery, the Union forces could not be dislodged from Cemetery Hill. Aim! Aim! Fire! Fire! Boom! The rifling causes the bullet or the projectile to spin. And the more it spins... Yeah, exactly. The more accurate... Yeah, very good, very good. So you know exactly what you're talking about. By day two, Lee was attacking an entrenched enemy that held the high ground. Robert E. Lee's going to be on this side, Seminary Ridge, look across, and he's trying to figure out where the Union line ends on that. So he looks across there, and he sees the Union troops there, and on July the 2nd, he's got to figure out where does the Union line end, because I want to try to find that flank, okay? The idea is they're going to march all the way up the Emmitsburg Road, attack the Union on the left flank, push them off the road, get all the way up to Cemetery Hill, push the Union line off of Cemetery Hill. But the Union troops are continuing to deploy. Day two, what's going to go wrong is this. There were 10,000 Union troops who come onto the battlefield in the early morning of July the 2nd that can't be seen by the Confederates. They actually move out to the Emmitsburg Road. And what's going to happen is they're going to get in Robert E. Lee's way. Intense fighting occurred in multiple engagements throughout the day. This is where the fighting occurred in the Devil's Den, the Peach Orchard, and the Wheat Field. About 10,000 casualties occurred during all this fighting. On the extreme southern flank, Confederates attacked Little Round Top. This is the monument for the three Texas regiments that attacked Little Round Top on day two. You can see a little red top off of the distance. This is the position of Little Round Top, defended by Chamberlain in the 20th Maine. Chamberlain's troops took position just as the Confederates attacked. Chamberlain ordered a famous downhill bayonet charge. The brave men of the 20th Maine held Little Round Top despite being outnumbered almost two to one, and this carried the day. By day three, Lee was running out of options and ordered a massive frontal assault known as Pickett's Charge. An amazing 12,000 Confederates followed General Pickett across more than a mile of exposed farmland. During Pickett's Charge on day three, the Confederates have to go across all these fields and they're going across all these fences at the same time. Lee watched as his Confederate troops were decimated under heavy enemy fire. Most of the men were killed before they reached the stone wall. 
There was little the Confederates could do as they came within range of the Union sharpshooters. The Battle of Gettysburg ended with hand-to-hand -hand combat in the field right behind me. It was a brutal end to three terrible days of fighting, with a cost of over 50,000 casualties. No one understood the importance of Gettysburg more than Abraham Lincoln. The words of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address are inscribed in his memorial in Washington, D.C. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. From these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth.